Welcome to this tutorial. We'll be learning how to create and spice up our base notes when playing Coral High Lives. If you are new to this channel, you can go back and watch the many Coral High Life videos I've put up on this channel so that you can appreciate what we'll be talking about. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Our practice song for the tutorial today will be done as it. So let's get right into the video. So the first thing we need to do is learn the original bass line. And this cannot be overemphasized. And this is very important because if push comes to shove, you would have a backup to rely on. All your work will be cost 90. If along the line of improvisation, you get lost and you don't have any backup to fall on. So it's important to learn the original bass line. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I've created a simple bass line that can serve as a foundation for the creative process. Let's hear how it sounds. Step two is to learn the chord progression. As we can see, there are three major chords in the progression. So we have the Do chord, we have the So chord, and then we have the Re chord. Okay, so it's important to know this because when you are playing and you are improvising on the bass, typically to start with, you would have to choose bass notes from each of these chords so if you are playing within this region of the do chord you can decide to pick do me and so in order to play the selected bass parts of the song and when you come here it's so chord so you can play so t and re now when you come here you do the same thing do me so and when you come here you can see that's a re chord so you can play re fa la now this for beginners as you get to the advanced stage you can know how to combine your notes well but for starters you can start with just the chordal notes to form the bass so let's hear and let's watch what i'm doing with this section so i'm going to play you know this song and i'm going to use the chordal notes from each of these parts to form the bass so let's watch and listen. Now, step three is to identify where the strong beats fall. Now, this is very important because in the art of improvisation, obviously, you may not want to be stuck with just the chordal notes. Now, the question would be, where do I play the other notes if I'm improvising? That's where the knowledge of the strong beats and the weak beats would come very useful. So here, I've put an asterisk where the strong beats are. So you can see that the strong beats are on do, do so me and it goes on now this is assuming this is four over four in terms of the time signature but i mean you can clap it out and just hear how it sounds so at each of these places you just have to take note of it because in the improvisation stage you would have to be combining notes to make the music more interesting and it's good to know where the strong notes are and as we'll be seeing subsequently in the other parts of the video how to improvise and what notes you are going to play also depend on where the strong beats fall on 
Now, the final part is what we've all been waiting for, how to put everything together. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I've created three variations. Now, just as we said, we have to learn the original baseline so that just in case in the middle of the improvisation, you know, we forget a few things. We can rely on what the original baseline was. And just as we said, you have to know the chordal notes. So as you can see, if I applied it in each of these variations, I've done. So the first line is the first variation. Now, in that one, you can see that all I'm playing are notes. In this region, we said that's the Do chord part. So you can see that I've played a Do note. I also played a So note. Now, these two can be found in the Do chord. So I've satisfied that. I've also done same here. And I've done same here. Likewise here. So in this one, we said first one, know the chordal notes. We've satisfied that. The next one we said we are going to, you know, formulate something. So we also need to know where the beats lie on. So for that one, we said as much as possible, let the chordal notes lie on the strong beat. So in this one, we said that this is a strong beat and I have a do note here, which is good. I also did the same thing for this one, do, because it's a do chord and it's a strong beat. When I came here too, I did a so and it goes on and on. So I've satisfied that. The second thing is you have to realize that um, in order to create some good music, you have to allow some form of independence to be between what you are playing on the right and what you are playing on the left. So here you can see that the right hand is playing the normal melody line. And then on the left hand, I decided that I would skip every two beats and play two notes. Then I skip the next two beats and play two notes. And as you see in the demonstration, it sounds very interesting because what is happening here tends to be or it's sounding different from what is happening on top. So putting all these things together, let's watch the first um, video about the first variation. Now we go on to the second variation. So in the second variation, same thing I did. I made sure that I selected from this region as much as possible chordal notes. So I have do and so which are part of the do chord. Now you can see that there's re and then there's t. But just as I said, all these will not necessarily be on the strong note. Now this one is do re and then do so do starts with the strong beat and then we have the re and the do which you know sound nice suppose that i played a re on the strong beat and i didn't resolve it well it may sound a little off so just for the purposes of you know beginning to learn how to play if you follow this you realize that you'll be on track and it's a similar thing i've done for the other ones just as i said Apart from that, we've recognized where the strong beats are, we've organized our notes, making sure that we are selecting notes, you know, from the, the chord. The, sec the third thing we have to do is to, you know, make it a little interesting. So just as I said, you have to create a little bit of independence here. So you have to vary what you are doing here from what you are doing here. This is straightforward. Every beat has a note. So one, two, three, four. And you can, you can see that here, one, one here, but here I'm playing two notes in the space of one. Here, three notes in the space of one, and here, two notes. So I'm varying what I'm doing here from what I'm doing there. And as we would see in the video, when I play it out, you understand how it's going to make 
the whole bass improvisation very interesting. So let's watch the second uh, improvised bass. Okay, so for the third one, it's a similar thing we are doing. So just as I said, ensure that you're able to satisfy, you know, a few things there. Make sure that your strong beats have notes which are from the chord. And then the third thing is try to create some form of independence. So you combine your notes, make sure that what's happening here is remember what's happening down. And then you're good to go. So here I created a second you know or a third type of variation just as i said before so that's a third type of the variation and um you know i'm sure once you watch it and you listen to it you see how interesting it sounds so let's watch the third part <laughs> Okay, so now we've seen all the three variations and I used a slow tempo just so that we'll be able to see, you know, the notes very well and be able to follow them. Now I'm going to increase the tempo and we'll listen to how everything is going to sound. So I'll take each of the variations and play them in tens so that we can see how to sound like once we increase the tempo. So let's watch this video. Okay, so now I'm sure we've learned a thing or two. This is just part one of the video. Um, I'll be doing the second part in the next video so that we take the second part of the song and then also try and see how we can spice it up. So we can go through what we've done so far and then I'm sure you'll be able to you know, have a few ideas and generally create your own lines. Yes, there's no perfect line you just have to keep practicing and you know fishing out trying different notes different combinations and you'll be able to get your own thing if you're able to just write the notes of the song down and try and see what you can put there 
you realize that by and large you'll be able to create something of your own so once again if you've not watched the other videos please try and watch them and subscribe to the channel like and comment and i'm sure through the videos you will to learn a thing or two about playing coral high life base